Hello, and welcome to A Gross of Physics. Today is day 34, and what we're going to talk about today is equilibrium. Now, students often wonder why we study vectors, and how does it apply to them in the real world. Well, vectors do have applications that are important for us. And one of the most important ones is being able to calculate things like equilibrium. Anytime you're trying to get an object to stay stationary, for example, hanging a sign or putting up a poster or perhaps a traffic light across the street, needs to utilize the concept of equilibrium. Now, the way equilibrium works is that all of the vectors will have to add up to zero. So we can have an equilibrium situation when all the vectors, no matter where they point, add up to zero. Now what we can do is solve for vectors that will produce equilibrium. We could also solve for the vectors and, and find the resultant and see if an object in, is in fact in equilibrium. If we are trying to put up a building, it would be important to make sure that the building doesn't fall down. Um, pretty sure you're not going to get a repeat uh, business if you build buildings and they don't stand up. So equilibrium is important so that all the forces involved in the building um, level out and aren't too much stress or strain on the materials beneath uh, the building. So the foundation needs to be strong and as you build the building up um, from a lower to higher point you want to make sure that all the forces are distributed evenly. Well, I took an entire course when I was at RPI uh, entitled Statics. So it was an entire course devoted to equilibrium. And we were dealing with vectors in not just one or two directions, but all three dimensions. And that became quite um, confusing because we were dealing with three-dimensional space. Now, in our case, what we're going to look at is equilibrium in two dimensions at the most. And what I want you to realize is that the equilibrium is just a situation when all of the vectors add up to zero. If they don't add up to zero, you're not in equilibrium. Now, the term for the vector that will produce equilibrium is called the equilibrant. And we have a symbol for that. It's an E with the half arrow on top. Remember, the resultant was an R with the half arrow. The equilibrant here is going to be E with the half arrow. Now, if we find the resultant to be, for example, let's say 50 meters east. So I walk around in the woods and I end up 50 meters east of where I started from. Well, what vector would make me return back to the origin? That's what's known as the equilibrant. And what we can do is just take the inverse of the direction. So instead of saying 50 meters east, the equilibrant would be 50 meters west. So it's easy to calculate with the north, south, east, and west um, coordinate system. All you have to do is take your direction and flip it. So what we have is a situation where if it's west, we make it east for the equilibrant. If it's north, we make it south for the equi equilibrant. So whatever the resultant is, we switch the name of the vector. So if R is um, 100 meters per second at 30 degrees north of east, we would switch to north to south. So it would be south of and switch the east to west, south of west. It's the same number. It's the same unit. It's just the opposite direction. Now in the X and Y coordinate system, it would be 180 degrees away. If we remember, 180 degrees is half of a circle. So if you're talking about 0 to 360, the opposite of 0 is 180. So no matter where we are in the XY coordinate system, we can just either add or subtract 180 to that number, and that would allow us to find the equilibrant. So in the case of 90 degrees, if that's our resultant, the equilibrant would be 270 degrees. Now the only difficulty in this is that we want to keep it between 0 and 360. So if the number of our resultant is from uh, 0 to 180, let's say, we would want to add 180 to our answer. If the resultant is somewhere between um, 181 and 360, in that case we'd want to subtract from uh, our resultant. So we have two different methods based on the coordinate system that we have. 
If we want to produce the equilibrant with the north, south, east, west coordinate system, we switch the letter of the direction. Keep the number and the unit the same for the resultant. As far as the XY coordinate system goes, we would take 180 and either add 180 to our resultant angle or subtract 180 to our resultant angle. Um, if you're in quadrant one or two, you would add. If your resultant is in quadrant three or four, you would subtract. The magnitude and the units stay the same. Now let's do some practice problems dealing with um, finding the equilibrant if we know the resultant. Now the equilibrant is whatever will cancel out the resultant. <clears throat> so what we want the equilibrant to do is point in the opposite direction. So if these are our four resultants, each of the equilibrants will have the same length, so in this case 15 kilometers. Since we're dealing with north, south, east, and west, the angle is the same, 46 degrees. We change the west to an east and we change the south to a north. So it's 15 kilometers at 46 degrees east of north. The equilibrant for the second one is 111 meters per second at, and since we're dealing with the XY coordinate system, we have to subtract 180 degrees from the 298, and we get 118 degrees. The third one, 18.5 meters per second at 29 degrees west of south and then finally 120 kilometers per hour at 110 plus 180 and that's 290. So <clears throat> it's important to note the magnitudes are the same the directions so magnitude is the same the directions depend upon the system. So if you have the north, south, east, west, you just switch the words, switch the directions. If you're dealing with XY, it's plus or minus 180 degrees. <clears throat> if it's less than 180, you add 180. If it's greater than 180, you subtract. So the equilibrant is easy if you have the resultant. You just keep the same number of the magnitude, keep the units the same, and then switch the direction in the opposite direction. Resultants on the left, equilibrants on the right. Now that we can find the equilibrant knowing the resultant, it's important to realize that we can also use the concept of equilibrium to solve more complex problems. And what we can do is use the mathematical vector procedure in order to do this. Now equilibrium is a state where all of the vectors add up to zero. So we, what we can do is solve for an unknown in a problem based on the fact that all of the vectors will add up to zero. Now the problem is if we have a situation where the vectors are at an angle, it's going to be more difficult to do. So here's what we can do we can actually take the vectors that we know and resolve them into X or Y components. If we know that all the vectors are perpendicular, what we end up having is a situation where we would have two unknowns and two equations. What we can do is effectively set up all of the X vectors and set them equal to zero. Set up all of the Y vectors, set them equal to zero. And if we do that, we end up with two equations. Now in math class, we would say we have two equations, we could have up to two unknowns. And there are different ways we can solve that. This is a fairly complex uh, algebraic solution. So what I wanna do is actually cover the entire process in two more days as well. I wanna do entire examples for an, an entire lecture. That way they'll be shorter, and if you need to watch them more than once, you'll have time to do so. What um, the procedure becomes is as follows. All you need to do is take all the vectors that you have in the problem and make sure that they're X and Y. So it's possible to have an unknown vector at a certain angle, let's say 30 degrees. 
Well, normally we would take the vector's magnitude, so the hypotenuse, and multiply it by the cosine of 30, and then multiply it by the sine of 30, and that would give us the legs of the right triangle. But since we have two equations, because we have two directions, x and y, we can actually have an unknown variable as the hypotenuse. Now, it's a little difficult or different than what we've done before, but this is all you have to do. You're going to use the symbol for that vector, let's say it's a, and you would write a cosine 30 equals ax. a sine 30 would be ay. But remember, you keep the ax on one side, the cosine 30 term, and you keep the ay on the other side, the um, y term that will allow us to then take any other vectors that we know and of course you couldn't solve a problem if we just had one vector one vector cannot be in equilibrium that's impossible you need to have something to balance it out but what you would be able to do is take the other information you'd have to have some known values maybe you know the weight of the sign you're trying to um, hang and then what you would do is you set up all the x's and say they have to be equal to zero if we're in equilibrium set up all the y's and then they would have to be equal to zero if you're in equilibrium. So the steps become break your vectors into x and y. If you don't know what the numbers are, use symbols instead and those symbols will be part cosine and part sine. The other important thing will be to know what the signs are of each of the components. If it's going to the right it's positive, if it's up it's positive, if it's to the left it's negative, if it's down it's negative. And then what we would do is set all the vectors equal to zero. All the x's together equal zero, all the y's together equal zero. The symbol um, for add up all the x's and y's <clears throat> in math class is a sigma. So the sigma is a Greek letter that represents summation. We add up all the vectors in that direction. Then what you'll be able to do depending upon the problem is solve the two equations. Typically what you'll have is two unknowns, and you'll be able to solve one equation for a certain unknown and substitute it back into the first equation. It's a skill that you may have learned in math class and it may have been abstract when you took it in math because you didn't understand that it actually represented real world vector problems. We could do this in the real world. This is not a concept that is just um, for the fun of it. You can utilize this in order to hang real things and make sure that they're not gonna fall down. That's an engineering principle that's very important. And as I said before, I took an entire course based on just keeping things ba balanced. We called it statics, and remember, it's equilibrium, but if you call a course statics, it sounds a little harder and you sound smarter. That's the whole point of physics. You wanna make yourself sound smarter when the reality is you're not. None of us are any smarter than each other in this case, we just know some fancy terms. And I'm trying to get you to the point where you know some of the fancy terms too. As long as you work hard and keep trying these problems, you'll be able to do these problems just as easy as I do. And what we'll do is a couple of days, and we'll actually, like I said, dedicate entire days to solving a couple equilibrium problems. Because I know it's not just the physics that frighten the students, it's also the algebra. And some of the simultaneous equations is something that you may um, be a little fearful of based on your experiences in math class. If you haven't done this before, I'll show you the steps needed to solve simultaneous equations, and you'll see that it is not magic. It's just science. You'll be all right.